Hi, and welcome back to Inspired the Game. I'm Sean. <laughs> and I am Lola. Today, we are talking about Inventions, Evolution of Ideas by Ego Griffin Games, who we want to thank for sending us a copy of the game to review. Before we get to that review, we'll give you a very brief overview of how it plays. Inventions is played over the course of six rounds called Eras, in which you will be leading your civilization into the future. During the course of the game, you will be presenting new ideas, creating inventions, innovating on others' inventions, and sharing your discoveries with the world. You will also be traveling around the world, learning from sages, and sending your diplomats to harness new milestones. Occasionally, eureka moments may happen, propelling your civilization into a new era. During the course of the game, you will be earning progress tiles that will be offering you various benefits throughout your game. Chaining actions together allow you to perform multiple actions in the same turn, and the higher your influence, the greater amount of chain actions you have available to you. Once you have reached the sixth era, you will add up all the influence points and see who has had the most successful civilization. Now, I've got to make it very clear here. I love Lacerda <laughs> Games. He is arguably my favorite designer of all times. So I am a little bit biased here. And I have to get that out right from the beginning. And having said that, I think this is one of my new favorite Lacerda Games. One of the things I really love that's going on here is the flexibility of your turns. Mm -hmm. There is so much you can do in every turn that it's exhilarating, it's exciting, and it's refreshing. Because there is a worker placement element to this. You have 10 actions that you can do. But there's always the element of how you can chain actions together to have the greatest efficiency of your turn. Because of the flexibility of all the things that you can do within a turn, it really lends to creativity in how to manage your turn. So out of those 10 main actions, you can only really block yourself because you can't put a piece in the same forum as another piece. Basically, your turn comes down to what do you want to do? Now go find a way to do it. Yeah, so because if you are blocked with your three pillar pieces, there's almost always, usually, an alternative way you can accomplish the same action that you want to take somewhere else. So whether that's by using a diplomat and using a milestone action, or one of your finished inventions, or even a progress tile, or things that are out there on the board with traveling. As you can see, there are lots of different ways to achieve an action when you really want to do one. Mm -hmm. So what I really love is deciding in a turn, knowing what I really want to accomplish within that single turn, then analyzing all the possibilities in the board to see how many additional actions I can accomplish in one turn to absolutely maximize the efficiency of that one turn and you can tell how much I enjoy <laughs> this and that's where the creativity comes in because there's a lot you can do now however if you are susceptible to this it can lead to a lot of analysis paralysis <laughs> and you do have to be wary of that because yeah. there are so many possibilities usually within a turn that to calculate in your mind all the possible permutations that you mm -hmm. can do it can mean that you have a long game <laughs> it's supposed to play about 45 minutes per player and when we play just the two of us our games roughly are about four hours i don't know if i should admit that <laughs> <laughs> so yeah our early games as you learn the game as you become more familiar with it your early games are going to take longer as you do have to analyze all those so it the turns can be very long therefore the games can be very long but they do have a mechanism in there so as you collect your aspiration tokens as you decide what actual token to take the other, your opponents are taking their turns already, so you're not taking up that time. So it cuts a little bit of time off of your turns. 
Yeah, and that's a really great mechanism that he's built into the game that we didn't quite talk about in the overview. So when you earn a progress tile, you take an aspiration tile, which is really just a placeholder tile that you set to the type of tile that you're getting, and you don't have to worry about that in the middle of your turn. Mm -hmm. You just put it down below, you have that aspiration. Now, once you're done your turn and done calculating all those permutations about what you want to do in your turn, now you've got those tiles and you can look through your player aid, look to see which one you want to get. So for each type, whether it's culture or economy or whichever, there's a list of possibilities, one to seven, and you can take one of those tiles. So you can look through, see what they all do, and decide which ones you want to take. Now, progress tiles are really important here because on top of your chaining actions and your base actions, they provide extra benefits. So there are ones um, that will give you an ongoing benefit from as soon as you earn it. The economy ones will let you do a once per round action when you put one of your economy tokens on it. And then there's a one that gives you a once per game powerful action that is an, a chain action as well. So getting these progress tiles is really, really beneficial in your game. And as you're putting them onto your player board, you're getting additional benefits like getting new specialists mm -hmm. to, because that's one thing that we were really challenged by in some of our early games was reaching a, a point where how do you get more of the specialists? It can be challenging mm -hmm. to do your actions, get them all out there doing the things you want to, but then getting them returned or earning new ones. So the theme is really, really strong in this game. And I love how it's all put together. Mm -hmm. It all makes logical sense and is very well integrated. So much research obviously went into this, putting together mm -hmm. the different eras. And it's fun. You can only do an invention if you have mastered the milestone necessary to do it. So for instance, you can't invent a calculator if you don't know what mathematics is all about. It mm -hmm. all makes a logical sense and is just brilliantly put together. And it all comes down to those milestones and some of them are going to be common knowledge. Some of them you're going to uh, advance into using your diplomats. Some of them, if you move into an era that's further along and you were ahead of the times, anything from an earlier era is now common knowledge for you. And it's the whole theme of following an invention from presenting an idea to the world and then somebody invents that idea, which might be you, it might be another player, but then somebody else, which cannot be the inventor, can innovate on that. And then in the end, anybody that was involved in any part of that process can share that knowledge with the rest of the world. And everybody that was involved gets points or people out in the world. And it's... It's really, really well thought out and kind of fun to, to see in action. And the iconography on the board is really clear. It makes it really simple to follow along because it's a very complicated game. So mm -hmm. in a game like this, you need that. So all of that on the board, at least while you're learning the game, to follow along makes it very, very nice. Mm -hmm. I also really enjoy how those ideas are reversible. So when it's an idea, it's on one side, you flip it, and now it's got this colored side. It's not just a mere thought. It's actually created. Mm -hmm. And I just love that function of those reversible cards as well. Yeah, it's really a lot of great artwork on the cards in yeah. all respects. Yeah, the whole thing is nice, nice amount of colors, mm -hmm. beautiful artwork. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we review at the two player count. And with some of these big Euro games, they don't always play as well with two players. Mm -hmm. But I was thrilled that this one really did. So they have this mechanism where you have a third player that uses their pillar to move around the world and they do various actions. And it's really, really good. So you're not competing with that. So I don't always appreciate a game that has a third player AI that's actually a competitive force for you. Now this isn't, it's really just helping you out for mm -hmm. the most part. So it goes along and well, maybe it will put out down an idea. If there was already an idea there, it will invent it. If it's already invented, it will share it or it will innovate. And it's helpful for progressing the areas along. Mm -hmm. Now there's sometimes it might be a detriment to you so say if you were planning on inventing in that next era and the third player is getting there but the nice thing is you can mitigate that because you can see where it's going next you can watch what it's doing and you can head it off if you really need to do something so as long as you're paying attention to what it's doing you Fine, can I get it <laughs> you can actually use it to your benefit <laughs> You gotta pay attention, man. Gotta pay attention. <laughs> 
twice. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, and I'll take that. And, oh, he moved there. Well, who knew that was going to happen? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> now, my final thoughts here. I think Invention's Evolution of Ideas is absolutely a brilliant brilliant game and I love it. I really love the chaining of the actions and that flexibility. So instead of just taking one action, well that one action can be another and another and you can do so many things by chaining or collect connecting actions because even when you present an idea, you get to do that action on that space that your little specialist went on to as well. So there's lots of ways to creatively get a lot out of this game. I love the flow, I love the theme, and I just think it works beautifully and it's delicious. So yeah, there's a lot to wrap your your mind around in here, but it's a lot of fun. If you can get into the complexity of the game and learn the mechanics, you can have a lot of fun with this game. Well, thank you so much for watching our review today. If you appreciate this content, please support the channel by subscribing. And as always, happy, happy gaming, gaming, folks. Are we going? Yep. <laughs> Watching your gurn. It's a good thing I'm editing this. <laughs> oh, come on. What are talking about? <laughs> Stuff. Stuff. Things. Things. <laughs> Whatever the hell this is. Occasionally, eureka moments may happen. <laughs> Six times a charm. <laughs> In the course of the game, you will be earning progress. <laughs> Imagine what is... God, I cannot form my thoughts today. Hi. In the course of the game, you will be earning progress tiles that will offer you various bon... Bonifets? <laughs> I went rogue. I changed it. <laughs> I'm laughing and I'm like, I'm like, ha 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 ha, and I'm out of breath and you're like, and we're starting. <gasps> <laughs> Over the course of the game, you will be earning progress tiles, which will give you a numerous amounts of benefits throughout the game. A numerous? <laughs> There's so much possibilities with your actions, so much creativity. You can go and masterfully, effectively pulling together really satisfying turns. 